Welcome back everyone. Last video we talked about creating this kind of tree of folders in ExamSoft today. We're going to go through the basics of making multiple choice questions within these folders. So the first thing you want to do is take your mouse and click on the folder you want to add to, then drag the mouse over the gear, drop down to create new question, then click on multiple choice. That'll bring you to this screen. Um, and what I like to do is start by just putting my question stem right into this box. Now you can either just type the question stem in, or if you have a Word document that has kind of questions built up in it already, um, you could really just copy and then paste right into this box to save a little bit of time. So I fast forwarded a bit so you didn't have to watch me enter all those options. So the next thing you want to do is click on the box that says correct next to whichever option is correct. So in that case for me, it's option D. Now if you want, you can actually make it multiple options. So if I want all three of these to register as correct, then you can make that choice. For me though, I just want option D. The next option you see on your right is the option to lock. Now this will matter later on if you decide to randomize all your options. If you lock something in place, however, it will not randomize with the rest. So if this is locked, it will always appear as option D. Why would you want a question to lock? Well, if you're using something like all of the above, usually it makes the most sense if that always appears at the bottom. In this case, though, I don't want to lock. If you want to add an option D, E, F, all the way through Z, you can click on add new answer choice here. Now that I'm done with that, the next thing to do is type in a title. Now that really depends on how you want to keep yourself organized. For math teachers, they might want to put area of a square question one, or for a social studies teacher, they might put D-Day question one, question two, etc. For me, what really works is I'm just going to copy and paste to the relevant part of the question, and that is the best way to kind of keep myself organized. And then at the beginning in parentheses, I'm going to put just an E for easy. Once I'm done with that, you can look at folder and notice that the folder's already been selected because we clicked on the gear earlier to make sure it was properly sorted. Next, you want to add it to a group. For the group, you want to focus on whatever your subject or chapter is because it's important that all of the questions within that subject or chapter are put together. Why? Well, let's say you have a big unit test that spans a month or so. If I don't group my Letters from American Farmer question here, I might have one Letters from American Farmer question as question one, and then one is question 50. And that's a little bit confusing for students. But if I put a group for Letters from American Farmer, what that's going to allow me to do is keep it nice and organized and make sure that all these questions appear together. The next thing is categories, which is important, but I'm going to get to it in a later video. Next, you'll see weight. This is just how much the question is worth. Most of the time, you're just going to leave it at 1.0, but if you have a question that, say, is worth double, you can make it 2.0. Um, for randomized choices, you can leave that unchecked for now. Later on, when you make the assessment, you'll have the option to randomize the whole test rather than worrying about it for each particular question. If you had multiple answers over here, which I don't hear, but if you did, you could choose whether you want to award partial credit or whether you want it to be an all or nothing type of question. Down here with attachments, this is a really great feature that separates ExamSoft in, uh, from, say, a test that you're just copying in a copy machine. Here, you can drag and drop many different files that the students can look at in order to answer the question. So you might drag and drop an image, or you might drag and drop a PDF, or you might even drag and drop a video. And the students can use those things then to answer any number of questions. You can leave rationale and internal comments blank for now, that's fine. And now that I'm all finished with my question, the last thing to do is to click approve. Now it's really important you click approve instead of save. Save will just save your progress, but approve will actually allow you to use the question when you make assessments. So I'm going to click approve. Now that the question has been approved, I'm going to go back to my questions tree and you'll see that now instead of zero, it says one and I now have one question within this folder. Simply repeat that process for your other folders and then you'll have a nice bank of questions from which you can create assessments. That's all for this video. Next time we'll talk about more advanced questions such as fill in the blank and matching. Thanks for your time.